So yeah, for the price paid, I mean, I don't think we're getting bad performance here with these older AAA games. You gotta keep in mind, I mean, we've only got $130 into this thing. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Uh, feeling a little under the weather, so my voice is a little jacked up today, but I really wanted to get this video out because I was really impressed by the performance of this little PC. So in this video, basically what we're going to be doing is putting together a $130 gaming slash emulation PC with parts I've picked up on eBay. And when it comes to the price here, I mean, it's really not that bad for older AAA games. And when it comes to emulation, this will actually emulate Wii U and even Nintendo Switch using the Yuzu emulator. Now, one thing that really struggled on it was PS3, given the CPU we're using here. But uh, PSP, PS2, you want to do some GameCube and Wii, it's going to handle it just fine. Even 3DS emulation is possible on this system. But before we go any further with this video, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. Office, but the main reason that I use URCD keys is for their Windows keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here, choose next, choose activate, and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone, and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. Now, it is totally possible to put something like this together for $130 picking up parts from eBay, but you might be able to get out a bit cheaper if you keep an eye out for local deals. With this setup here, I did add an extra 8 gigabytes of RAM, and the video card was not included, but the base of the unit is an Optiplex 3050. I got this on eBay for $62 with an SSD pre-installed, and this actually uses an M.2 SSD. And these things really are a dime a dozen. This one here didn't have a hard drive bracket installed, so we also didn't get that disk drive, but that's something I wouldn't use anyway. And one of the big reasons you can pick this up so cheap is there's not a lot of upgrade room here, especially when it comes to the video card, given how close that PCIe slot is to the power supply. So you have to go with a low profile card. And initially going into this, I really wanted to go with something like a GTX 1650, but it's not going to fit unless I do some modification or use a riser cable and have the card, you know, totally inside of the PC. So again, we're limited on choices here. You could go with something like an RX 6400, but that's PCIe 4, so you are losing out on some performance there. So I just did a quick search on eBay and picked up a good old GT 1030. I paid $56 for mine. Obviously, it's a low profile version, and it is using GDDR5 VRAM. And if you are interested in building something like this, make sure you do not pick up one with DDR4 RAM. The performance is going to be much less, and we already have a lower end card here, so we want it as much as we could. And, you know, it would be nice to put something much more powerful in here, but given the space we have in this small form factor chassis, this is the card that I opted to use. Plus, I wanted to keep the price as low as possible. And just doing a quick search here for an i5-7500 SFF, you can find a ton of them. The one that I picked up came with 8GB of RAM, and it was a single stick, so I did want to upgrade this to 16, and I just picked up a $12 8GB DDR4 stick on eBay. And once it's all put together, I'll give you a quick rundown on the specs here. For the CPU, we've got the Intel i5-7500. Four cores, four threads. It would have been really nice if they would have added some extra threads to the CPU. But unfortunately, we're kind of stuck here with what we've got. It does have a max turbo up to 3.8 gigahertz. We've got 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 2400 megahertz, a 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD. And of course, we've got that NVIDIA GT 1030. We've got two gigabytes of dedicated GDDR5 VRAM. Do not buy the DDR4 version of this. You actually might see it for much cheaper, but skip the DDR4 version. And this did come with Windows 10 Pro pre-installed, so I'm going to leave it there. But, uh, I mean, we could always install Linux or even Windows 11 if we want to. And if this works out well with Windows 10, I actually might do a Linux video with this machine. If that's something you're interested in seeing, just let me know in the comments below. 
Okay, I mean, so overall, I mean, using this as a normal PC, it actually works out really well. We don't have any built-in Wi-Fi, but I've got Ethernet plugged in right now. And we do have more than enough power for, you know, web browsing, video playback, email checking, document editing. This i5-7500 is a good little workhorse when it comes to everyday tasks, but we kind of put this together for gaming and emulation, so that's exactly what I want to check out. And first up, we've got Street Fighter V, 1080p, medium settings, no resolution scale or anything like that. And I mean, we could probably go up to a medium high mix, but I still think it looks good enough and we didn't have to drop that resolution down. That's one of the most important things. Now, another fighting game that I tested was Injustice 2. And with that one, I did have to go down to 900p with a low medium mix to get a constant 60 out of it. Next up, we've got Doom Eternal, and I was a little disappointed with the performance here. I completely understand what kind of system we're working with. This is a lower-end system, but this is a very well-optimized game, and I figured we could at least get 60 out of it at 720p low, but unfortunately only got an average of around 48 FPS. When it comes to GTA V, I've always had really good luck with this game on this GPU, the GT1030. Right now, we're at 900p normal settings, which is basically like low for this game. There's really no low settings, it's all normal. And we get an average of 88 FPS. Now, if you wanted to run this at 1080p, we can do it, but I would recommend turning VSync on and just kind of locking it right there at 60. And the final PC game I wanted to test, at least in this video, is a newer one. We've got Spider-Man Miles Morales, 720p low, and it didn't do a great job at all. I tried all of the scaling modes, and I really just couldn't get any kind of good performance out of this GPU with this game, but this is the newest game that we tested on the list right now. So when it comes to the newer AAA games, I mean, this little GPU just really can't hang. If you wanted to go with indie stuff, then yeah, you'd be fine with it. But, uh, I mean, some older AAA games that are a few years old will be able to run on a system like this, but I'd say where this thing shines is actually emulation. So we're starting off light here with PSP using PPSSPP, DirectX 11 backend, Chains of Olympus 4X. And we could go up even higher than this, but, I mean, it still looks great. And, of course, since we're running this game, which is a harder one to emulate, we'll have access to full-speed PSP with a ton of games. I mean, I'd say as long as the game's compatible with the PPSSPP emulator, it's going to run it just fine. I also wanted to test out some PS2 emulation, so here's PC SX2, 1080p, DirectX 11 back in, Gran Turismo 4 running great. And I don't have any kind of cycle skips or anything like that going on with the emulator itself, and another one I tested was God of War 2, but with that I did have to take it down to 720p. As you can see with Afterburner, we're right there at around 70% GPU utilization at 1080 with this game, and God of War just takes a little more GPU to render. Well, a machine like this is going to struggle with newer AAA games, and you know, I kind of expected that going into it, but given the price at $130, if you know what you're getting into, I think it would be well worth it. It would work out as a secondary PC for everyday normal tasks. As you saw, it's actually offering way better emulation performance than I ever thought. Older AAA games and any games are going to run phenomenally on this, and if you just wanted to build something like this for Roblox and Minecraft for the kids, then it's also going to handle those games no problem at all. So after seeing what kind of emulation performance this thing put out, I will be doing a dedicated video. I think turning something like this into a nice little emulation setup would be perfect, especially given the price and the form factor. This would be great for an arcade cab or even a pinball machine. But the big question is, are we going to be running Windows or Linux, depending on how we have it set up? So, you know, if you do want to see Linux emulation on this, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave some links in the description. Sometimes you got to be patient with it. You might have to bid on a few things. But yeah, you could definitely put something like this together. And keep in mind, check your local listings. You might be able to find something with a little more power for less money. And I also wanted to apologize for the voice thing going on right now. Every year around Christmas, like clockwork, I get sick and it just happened. If you have any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.